All right. I guess uh, we can start chatting, just the uh, the four of us in a robot, but um, certainly happy to uh, to talk. Um, so I, I guess the first question is if anybody had uh, anything specific that they were interested in, want to talk about, if they have uh, experience with web components in general, start there. Or if people were looking to just hear things. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Yes. Um, can you hear me? I can now, yep. Okay, good. Uh, I attended uh, one of your sections on DrupalCon last year, and um, I'm interested to see what you have today. Great. Cool. What else? How about uh, Karen? What, what brought you here today? Well, I'm just looking over your slides from that you had linked in. Uh, in your description right now. And it's sort of cool that there's a way to make a web component without having to do React or Vue. Or, so yep. I'm interesting to, to get a little more information and understanding on that. Uh, I think cool. it's a good way to be able to have components and not have to go all the way. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely, uh... You know some quirks and challenges, but I, I think uh, I think long term, I'd like to think this is where it's headed. We'll see. How about uh, other Brian? What uh, what brings you here today? Or perhaps he is uh, away from his computer. Uh, how about uh, Chris? I don't know if you're yeah. there. Yeah, there we I'm, go. I am here, Brian. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll turn the camera on as soon as I get through lunch. Sorry. Um, That's fine. But uh, no, I just, I think I agree with your sentiment that web components are where things are going. And um, uh, I don't uh, do Drupal day to day these days. So just kind of curious to hear what people think and, uh, you know, kind of understand what kind of impacts it'll have on, you know, the way we approach, you know, Drupal builds, especially, I think it's interesting as a lot of the projects we're seeing uh, come through now aren't what I would consider traditional Drupal builds. Like they're not just Drupal, they have, you know, ideas where you need to get content um, to other channels. And so, you know, if there are ways that we can build components that can be leveraged across, you know, channels, I think that's kind of interesting. Cool. Um, so given all that, yeah, it's good to know what everybody's interested in. Maybe I can just spend a few minutes uh, cherry picking a few of those slides that I have just talking about kind of the basics of uh, what a web component is and then see if we have any questions from there. Um, also kind of given the small group and, and uh, what folks seem to be interested in, uh, one thing that I'd love to do if we have a little time um, related to the uh, decoupled menus uh, initiative in, in Drupal. Um, I've been working on a web component for that. I'd love to demo kind of what we have so far and just see what, what people think. It's certainly pretty early, but that would be fun for me. That sound good? Perfect. Awesome. I will share my screen. Okay, let me see if I can make these. I think I can start at the beginning, but all good. Um, yeah, so you know, I won't do the full song and dance necessarily for, for all of this, but um, so <clears throat> in past boffs about this topic and just general conversations I've had with people and, and, and also, um, you know, from my perspective, when I was starting to learn about web components and that, I still don't consider myself an expert by any means. Um, the distinction between like what what a quote unquote web component is versus like things like React or Angular or Vue or any of those frameworks, that distinction was kind of unclear. They're, they are like all components and all ways to build with components that primarily use JavaScript. Um, 
but I, I think it's important to you know talk about what makes web components a little bit different. So what makes them different is that it's actually a set of web standards, a set of web platform APIs, and, and they're not tied to a specific framework. So it's not like choosing React or Angular or something like that. And, and they can even be used with uh, other frameworks. So you could use a, a web component that you built in a view project, for example, um, which certainly can open up the, uh, you know, kind of cross framework possibilities here. And the, so the three pieces, the three kind of uh, main APIs are custom elements. Um, and we'll, we'll look at some, some quick examples, but that's basically the ability to create your own uh, custom HTML element, just like, you know, uh, H2 or div, you can uh, using this browser standard, create your own completely custom thing that you can just use like any other HTML tag. And then the shadow DOM is a little bit more complicated. Um, so the browser itself has the, the DOM document object model um, where you can select um, you know, different things in, in the, the browser. The web components introduced the idea of a shadow DOM, which is its completely its own completely isolated DOM that's specific to the instance of the component. And um, that does things like prevent uh, styles from uh, leaking into the component and isolates it in some pretty interesting ways. And then the, the last piece, which is I'd say probably the, the least important part from, from my perspective, but, but still important and useful is the um, concept of an HTML template. There, there really isn't a way in HTML as it stands to easily create a reusable template. There's a lot of templating engines that do that, um, but this also introduces that, that concept as well. And also uh, anyone feel free, you know, I won't go too long with this, but uh, if you have questions as we go along, feel free to jump in. Um, yeah, so uh, the fact that um, one thing that got me curious, I, I like building with components, but haven't really yet found a way to get this into my day-to-day -day workflow. So that kind of got me curious about learning more and, and understanding more. Um, and this is a, a pretty interesting example. Um, I don't know if anyone here has used the uh, Can I Use website. So you can search a particular like CSS feature, JavaScript feature, something uh, you know native in browsers, and see the support it has across common browsers. Uh, great tool. Um, and if you search web components, you can see uh, the different pieces of the spec, the support that they have. Um, HTML imports and HTML templates. Uh, HTML imports are kind of an abandoned spec, but HTML templates is, is what we're talking about. But the general story is that support is pretty good now. Um, unless you want to support IE 11, there are polyfills for that. So it's definitely possible, but it's, uh, it's less pleasant. Um, but if you're on modern browsers, um, this is definitely supported well across the board. But the other cool thing, if we actually just look at this site and inspect it, it just so happens that the Can I Use website actually is made up of a series of web components. So actually, if we inspect the table here, there's a custom element, the CIU support table. Um, and you'll see that has its own shadow DOM. And then inside of that, there's some kind of more traditional markup that we're used to, but then other web components inside of that. So CIU browser support um, for each of the individual columns. Um, so it's pretty interesting that, that this uh, kind of commonly used resource uh, itself is built on a series of, of these custom components. All right, so just a little bit more on, um, I'll skip through some slides. I did build out an example for this talk that was kind of fun, but um, let's just dive a little bit deeper on each of the three pieces, the, the custom elements and um, shadow DOM and HTML templates. So the uh, custom element, um, and this actually is the code pen that screenshot references, um, so I created this uh, election result tracker and that created this 
results hyphen tracker custom element. Um, I think they have to have a, a dash in them so that they don't conflict with uh, the top level HTML elements. Um, but so this custom element, um, when you just use it like any markup, it's going to render you know, exactly what the, the custom element is uh, created to render. In this case, um, this results tracker, but also it can take in attributes like the headline and the total and data for the candidates. And that can be passed down to the custom element and, and used when it renders. Um, if you're familiar with uh, React, for example, and, uh, and JSX, um, you know, this is more the kind of traditional HTML markup, but some of the same concepts about like passing in data um, are pretty similar. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of additional uh, subtleties to that, but that's like the, the basic idea. You can create your own custom purpose HTML element and you could, you know, create it in the scope of a project or you could make something that you um, distribute and share too. And then the shadow DOM. So this is the idea that um, custom elements have their own little uh, DOM tree and it's scoped to that component. So things from the outside uh, can't impact it. So if you're using JavaScript to select uh, elements in DOM, it won't see into the, the uh, shadow DOM. And you can also add styles to um, your component. And those styles will be scoped to this shadow DOM. So you could like create a rule for H2 that makes all H2s red. And that will only happen in this shadow DOM and wouldn't happen to the other H2s on a page. So it's a way that these components can be really well isolated. If you're making something like think of that election tracker that we saw before that you wanted to distribute and you wanted it to look the same way, regardless of where it's used. That's a really good application for that. Um, but it does mean that doing things like using global styles um, can be more challenging, which you're probably used to, you know, with, um, you know, regular HTML element styling. Um, there's definitely some ways to handle that, but it, it's a, a different kind of different way to think about things for sure. And then, um, see where I have a, uh, this is actually, I don't have a separate slide, but this is just a quick example of what an HTML template looks like. So um, in JavaScript and in, in this web component, you can define a, a template element. And that really is just a set of markup that can then be used later. It's actually, when you create it, it's not automatically referenced in the DOM you do have to like actually apply it to your, your web component shadow DOM, for example, for it to be used. So it's basically just a way to create, um, you know, a reusable template that you can either use in this component or, you know, reuse across others. So, um, I mean, I think why this is a little bit less interesting to me is because it, it almost seems like something that, you know, should already be there or that we've been been doing forever because we're so used to working with templating languages like Twig. Um, but it's also pretty important to be able to make these um, a little bit more pleasant to build. So that's like, I, you know, I don't, especially if people have questions or other things that they want to talk about, I definitely don't want to uh, spend the whole time just talking. Um, but was that a, a useful overview? Do people have any, any questions or kind of anything else they'd like to know more about that this kind of brings to mind? I also see a couple people joined us. Hi. Anybody there? Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. <clears throat> Believe me, Agan. What so um when you're thinking about web components, Brian, like how do you decide that you want to use them or for how many, like how many you're gonna build? You know, I, I have you know, obviously a, not really a front end uh 
developer. So like, you know, when I think of components, I think of like, it's the menu and it's the hero banner and it's the things like that. I mean, is it roughly translatable? And then how do you decide this makes good sense to build with a web component? This, I should just make a block in Drupal. Yeah, that, that is a good, good question. I don't know that I, for specifically web components have a really clear answer there. Um, still kind of figuring it out. But, but for me, like the biggest thing is, is reuse, right? If it's something that you're gonna use in a bunch of places, um, be it within, within, within the scope of one project or you know, especially if it's across multiple projects, abstracting out into a component should make it easier to use and you know, more repeatable and predictable. Um, so that's kind of how I think about components in general. Um, and then figuring out where web components fits into that general concept. I'm, I haven't quite made my mind up yet. I don't know if that answered your question at all. I, I think so. It, it, it seems like maybe there's still space in the this area to kind of grow to, to get, I don't want to say best practices, but to, to figure out that stuff. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, you asked about menus. I can use this as an in to, to demo my little menu thing, and that, that might give you some ideas. Um, sure. So, um, so do the quick uh, summary here. So for the, uh, de the decoupled menus initiative, I don't know if people have, have heard about it, but um, it's an initiative to basically add, you know, additional API support to Drupal to make it easier for people to build web components in their framework of choice. And what people are focusing on first is menus. So there's a, uh, a new module that's being worked on that exposes like a new menu endpoint to support this. And then uh, for DrupalCon, they're encouraging people to try to put together a, a bunch of components to exercise it. So um, because I'm interested in this initiative and also web components in general, I started uh, working on building out a uh, Drupal menu web component. So I have a project that I created for that. Um, so here's, here's the super quick demo. Um, with something like a menu. And, and this might kind of give you an idea of how this could be used to abstract things. Um, so I published this on NPM. It's obviously still super early, but um, so, and the, the uh, what I'm trying to do here, and it might evolve over time as people contribute to it, but the idea is that the components that were, are being created as part of this project are, are really generic so that they could be used on a bunch of different sites and themed different ways. Like it doesn't have uh, really any opinions about styling yet, but even when it's fully built out, it would have pretty small opinions about styling. Um, but, um, so this is published on NPM. So uh, there's a couple of different CDNs that offer this package now, including this one called Skypack, um, which make it really easy to just use something like a web component in HTML. So I will just open up a code pen. All right, blank code pen has nothing in it. So the first thing that, that we can do is import the script. Um, so again, this is like the simplest, most light way, lightweight way that we could do it. Um, importing it from a CDN. Uh, all we have to do is do this script type module and then import it. Um, you also could use this with a build process and install it as an NPM package and do all that, that fun stuff with Webpack or whatever bundler you're using. Um, but I think it is pretty cool that you, know, you literally could just drop this in on a blank HTML document. And then we can use the HTML element. Um, so it's a namespace with GDWC, generic Drupal web components, and then menu. Um, so if we just did that, as of right now, it wouldn't render anything. There's a couple of attributes you need to pass to it. So um, the branding is gonna be like the title for the menu. So if we do that, we see the menu title is displaying on screen. Um, so all we had to do was just import this one script and then we now get access to this um, uh, menu Web component, and then um, 
so with this uh, decoupled menus module, there's an endpoint that gets exposed. So the if you want to use this with uh, a Drupal endpoint, it takes two other attributes. The first being the base URL. So I'll just grab this here from this example menu endpoint. And put that in. And then the other thing is uh, the ID of the menu. So the machine name of the menu that, that you want to use. So um, menu ID equals main. And then boom. So this web component has the all the logic for that. And it goes out to that endpoint. And it gets all the menu data, parses it. And you know, right now it just is spitting out a list, you know, an, an unordered list of all the menu items. Um, but you know, I think this is a, kind of an interesting concept in, in really trying to abstract away like all of the, uh, you know, everything you need to do behind the scenes to talk to this API and just make a really simple, easily repeatable thing that hits a you know a Drupal endpoint that we know is going to have a particular structure and just spits out menu markup that you can use anywhere. So that was a demo I wanted to give, uh, but somewhat related to what you're asking, I think. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I also see some other folks uh, joined up. Um, I don't know if uh, anybody has any uh, questions about web components or experience with them that they'd like to share. Certainly happy to hand over the discussion to anybody who uh, has anything they want to cover. And alternatively, I also will talk uh, forever if there is dead space. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, with this project specifically, if anybody is interested in, in doing uh, more work with web components or the decoupled menus initiative, um, I think there's an initiative day on Tuesday at DrupalCon and uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be coordinating some sprinting throughout the event, trying to, trying to work on this some more. So could use uh, any help from anybody who's interested. Um, another interesting thing, uh, if uh, people don't have any questions or particular topics, you know, again, just kind of thinking of a web component as being like a, a like a generic browser standard. Um, let's see, there's a site web components everywhere. And uh, this goes into, um, and it kind of lays out for all of the different frameworks, how well they support web components um, based on a handful of different tests. So, you know, how easy it is to use a web component inside of another framework. And, uh, you know, you can dig around if, if you're curious, but the, the short story here is that for the most part, support is pretty good. So there are, kind of common conventions and support for using a web component that's not specific to a framework, but using it in another framework like Angular or Vue. Um, the one interesting catch is that React um, has some limitations. Um, they probably rate the, the worst out of all the frameworks here. Um, there are a bunch of issues where there's talk about trying to um, make improvements to React to handle this a little bit better. And it's definitely possible. There's uh, an example in the slides um, that we were looking at before using a web component with React, but there's uh, kind of a lot more boilerplate to get it to, to basically to get React to pass events and state into the web component. So it's a bummer that React specifically has some work to do here. How likely are they to make those changes? Um, that is a good question. I would say, having looked at some of these issues, <laughs> um, maybe not super likely. 
um, a lot of these issues have kind of been uh, struggling along for a long time. Um, I think what will happen is that they will make those changes as web component adoption increases. So I think they'll, they would tackle it when it, um, they essentially can't get away with not doing it anymore. So then that's at least one consideration when you're thinking about web components? Yep. Yeah, if you, if you uh, are familiar with React, comfortable with React, uh, want to use React, um, yeah, I think there isn't quite as strong a case. You, you in a lot of cases, would, might be better off just building the thing in React. Anything else? Um, if, I'd love to hear from uh, anybody else who joined late if you have uh, any, any questions or have used web components before. But also, again, totally fine. You may be eating your lunch, drinking a delicious cup of coffee. You know, as someone that really is obviously pretty new to the web components, and you're kind of going through it, you know, getting uh, getting to know the things as well. Like, where did you start? What are good places for people to 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 learn more about it? Is it really websites and things? Are there books? Are there certain people to you know to kind of pay attention to? Yeah, that that's a great question. Um... I actually found it difficult to find really good, clear resources. Um, the, uh, the, um, the MDN uh, page on um, web components is, is pretty good. Um, but like as far as there being like a really kind of clear, fun tutorial, I, I haven't yet found something like great or, or definitive. Um, so yeah, really what I did is just kind of started building things and then ran into things that I didn't understand or, you know, problems and then tracked down more specific articles, um, which is not necessarily the greatest experience. Sounds like an opportunity for somebody. <clears throat> yep. I uh, actually did, I purchased a, a domain uh, related to that uh, particular topic, a amusing web component related domain. Um, I just haven't had the opportunity to be that guy yet. Nice. <clears throat> and if people don't have, uh, you know, anything specific on this topic, um, we could certainly wrap up or if people, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd love to hear um, how people are just enjoying the camp. We can talk about anything if people don't have any web component specific things. Yeah, I'll put in the chat. I found a CSS Tricks article that is an introduction to web components. Nice. So I don't know if that would help anybody. And then um, I think I found a web components crash course on YouTube that Travis Traversy Media did. I'll also pop that in. That's great. I haven't looked at them personally myself, but as a, doing a quick Google search. Those yeah, the a CSS, couple of things that came up. CSS trick stuff is often uh, very good, so that's cool. Uh, and it's an article series. It's actually five parts. So um, the first part is an introduction to web components, and then part two is crafting reusable HTML templates, and part three is creating a custom element from scratch. Part four is encapsulating style. There you go. <laughs> I don't need to read it out. It's right there. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice to hear your voice. Um, yeah, that's great. That, that is excellent. Thank you for sharing that.
Um, that actually also brings to mind uh, another interesting wrinkle um, related to web components and, and kind of the supporting libraries here. So let's uh, see what their code examples look like. So yeah, so this looks to be using just kind of the um, browser native uh, web component spec. Um, what's a good example here? Yeah, this is actually a, a pretty decent one. So I'm trying to think of a way to like summarize this quickly, but um, so the, Browser native web component spec, you know, can do all of those three things, obviously, that we talked about, the three pieces of the API. Um, in building some things using this, there were definitely some cases where it, it felt um, to me like a lot of boilerplate, for example. Um, and this attribute changed callback is a, a pretty good example of that. So Thinking about like something like React, if you have uh, a prop that you're passing into your component, um, you know you typically want if a new prop uh, gets passed in or the state of a component updates, you want it to automatically re-render, and web components can do that too. But to do that with the um, kind of baseline um, web component spec, you have to use this attribute changed callback method. And when a particular attribute change, you have to, you typically will check it against the old value, check the old value against the new value to make sure that it actually changed to a new value so that you don't do unnecessary re-renders. Um, so you potentially have to like write that logic yourself every time. Um, but there are other supporting libraries uh, that can help with the developer experience here. The most common one uh, by far, from what I've seen anyway, is uh, Lit Element, which is a, a Google project. Uh, another popular one is Stencil, and there's a, a handful of others as well. Um, and it might feel strange to think about, you know, obviously one of the great promises of web components is that, you know, you don't require a framework, but now we're starting to introduce things that feel like frameworks. Um, but I found uh, using lit element, uh, for example, that it, it seems to strike a pretty good balance in that um, it does do some things to make the developer experience a little bit better, does some things better with templating, um, but pretty much everything that it, it adds or improves is pretty directly related to the baseline web component APIs. So, it would be pretty reasonable if you did decide, you know, I don't want to use lit element anymore, or like Google vanishes someday, uh, to be able to build the same thing using with without that library. Um, here's a good example of, uh, you know, kind of some of the the niceties here. So, if we for a headline in a component define it as a property here and say that it's a string, then lit element will automatically handle checking if an attribute changes and re-rendering it. Um, also, if your attribute is uh, like a type of array or object, it will um, uh, convert that into a string because uh, the attributes, at, at least if their attributes must be strings. So it handles a lot of that boilerplate that you'd have to write. Um, and again, I think it's, uh, I, when uh, building what I've been building lately with web components, I, I do use lit element. And I think it is uh, close enough to the spec that I, I don't feel like we're getting back to like a, a React or a Vue. Um, but then alternatively, something like Stencil, um, I feel like goes a little bit too far in that you know it describes itself as a compiler that generates web components and it, it actually, adds things that really aren't part of the, the main web components API. 
um, like its own virtual DOM and you can use JSX like you would use in React and, and all kinds of things. So for me personally, that feels like it's going a little bit too far and it would be hard to take something like this and um, you know create a vanilla web component with it. Cool. Uh, any other thoughts, comments, things you want to see? I think on the schedule we have uh, five more minutes. How's everybody en been enjoying MidCamp? It's been good and enjoyable. Um... No, so it's different doing it virtually, but we had that last year too. So yep. <laughs> I think yeah, the, change sure up in, the change up in format makes it uh, a little more entertaining. Yep, it'll be nice when we uh, can be in person again, but also at the same time, I think it's great that people outside of Chicago can easily attend too. So I think we're, yep. we're trying to have some sort of hybrid uh, approach next year. Not cool. that the drive from Ann Arbor is too far, but <laughs> <laughs> yep. the parking in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, unless anybody has anything else, we could wrap up. I hope this was interesting and it was nice, uh, nice chatting with everybody. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Appreciate Brian, it. for Welcome. this wonderful intro. Excellent. Thank you. Bye bye.